Can you see that okay? I'm assuming yes. Okay. Um, so when I was first asked to speak on this topic, my initial reaction was, this is brilliant. This is fantastic. Um, we'll be raising awareness of autistic women employment. Brilliant. But then as I started to kind of research what I was going to do for my presentation and think about the kinds of things I wanted to talk about, it started to make me feel quite uncomfortable. So I was thinking about why is this the case? Why is this so uncomfortable? And I suppose because it's a deeply personal situation, like I am an autistic woman in the workplace and thinking about that requires reflection on my own challenges and uncomfortable situations I've been in. Um, and also the importance of employment um, to me personally, well, it's important to everybody really, but to be able to pay my bills and feed my kids and I have three of them and they eat a lot. So this is really important. Um, and I'm currently, you know, the one who's working full time, my husband is a carer at the minute. So there's a lot of pressure on, on people to remain in employment. Um, I'm also quite aware as well of my own quite privileged situation. So I received a diagnosis of autism when I was in college. So I was able to complete my degree and go on to postgraduate study with supports that recognize the challenges that I had as an autistic woman. Um, and I now work in a field where my diagnosis is very relevant and also very helpful, which isn't the case for many people who are on the spectrum. And also, I suppose I feel a sense of responsibility that um, when you are speaking about your own experience as an autistic person, that A, that you're helpful and that you're also aware of the challenges and the suffering, to be quite frank, of a lot of people who do have a diagnosis. So hopefully this will be helpful for people. And just to stress as well that um, when I'm talking, I'm not saying that employment is essential. We're not saying that you have to be or need to be in employment if you're autistic, and that we have to recognize that a lot of the comorbidities alongside the diagnosis of autism, especially anxiety and depression, can be at a level where someone is unable to work. And sometimes that cause is actually from work, and that the priority is that you have a certain level of wellness so that you're able to function. But if someone who is autistic wants to work, how can we make that happen? And I think there's a collective responsibility that we all share in making that happen. So looking at autistic people employment in general, um, as Claire referenced, unemployment and or inadequate employment is a significant problem for adults with ASD. And this is despite having largely high formal qualifications. So people with um, undergraduate or postgraduate qualifications can still, if they're autistic, can still really struggle to find work. Um, and according to a survey that was done in by the National Autistic Society in the UK in 2017, just 16% of autistic adults are in full-time work. And according to DCU, there are at least 15,000 unemployed autistic adults with third level qualifications in Ireland. So what about autistic women in employment? So the Hayward, Hayward paper that Claire referenced as well um, showed that autistic women wanted somewhere they could fit in and they wanted a stable work environment, but they had low expectations around finding suitable work for themselves. Um, autistic women are less likely to have a diagnosis and therefore are less likely to be able to, well, they're not able to, to access recognised supports and the legal protections that come along with having a diagnosis in the workplace. And then there's also the societal kind of impact of the fact that there is less awareness of autism in women anyway. So kind of social leeway that may be forthcoming from colleagues and management for a man with autism, even if he doesn't have a diagnosis, they may well recognise autistic behaviours in someone and make adaptations on an informal basis, but not recognise that a woman has autism and make those same kind of accommodations. So we can't talk about autistic women in employment without mentioning at least autistic mothers in employment. And that's a picture of my young guest, which I had to put in there to show them off. Um, so it, some autistic women will become mothers. And working mothers have an additional load on top of the challenges of employment. They often have to negotiate the two roles. And if you're autistic, understanding some of the unwritten rules around being a mother in the workplace can be difficult. So for example, I never realized that sometimes 
people use sick leaves for themselves when they their own children are ill like it's almost like an an unwritten thing that you can do that um some autistic mothers as well will have children who have autism and we we know that mothers are more likely to be carers and they're more likely to be expected to reduce their working hours or even to leave work to care for children and they're often the main point of contact for services as well. So if you are an autistic mother in employment and you have your own autistic children, that is a, um, a huge workload to negotiate and manage. So when we talk about autistic women in the workplace, um, it's not just STEM or IT. Like I think there is a lot of kind of focus around autistic people working in kind of computer jobs. And it's important to recognize that not everyone with autism is particularly interested in STEM or IT, never mind be very good at it. Um, yeah, the, this picture in, the third picture in with the, the cup of coffee on the MacBook, I had to leave it in there because I just thought if you have autism and you're using a laptop, often people have motor co coordination difficulties as well. So if you're going to put a cup of tea on a MacBook, things can go very wrong. Um, I've actually done that myself. But um, yeah, just to, to highlight that, that is not a good idea. So what are the challenges around getting a job if you are an autistic woman? Well, the job interview um, can be a big hurdle for all autistic people. There's the issue of disclosure. How do you disclose before an interview that you are actually on the spectrum? And the last interview that I did was the first time that I'd ever disclosed before an interview that I had a diagnosis and it was for a role that was specifically to do with autism. And it was really helpful because one of the interview interviewers actually came out and spoke to me um, beforehand and explained where everyone was going to be sitting and what was going to happen. And it really helped kind of calm my nerves about it and it probably would be helpful for everyone, but it was particularly helpful for me um, because I do have a diagnosis of autism. Uh, I think it's important as well for people with autism to recognize that people do apply for jobs even when they don't fulfill all the criteria. So if you're looking at a job description from a very literal point of view, you can rule yourself out of jobs that you could actually get. Um, so just to flag that. Language choice in interviews, saying open-ended unstructured questions like tell us about yourself. Um, are very difficult questions to answer. So interviewers need to take a bit of responsibility around that. And there are things that you can do to make the interview more successful, which are often kind of unsignposted. So I found out that you can actually ring up HR and find out in advance who's going to be on your interview panel. And then people do bits of research around who's going to be on the panel and practice what they're going to say, which I was astounded by when I heard you could do this. But there you go, there are these kinds of unwritten things, unsignposted opportunities that if you do have autism, maybe you're not as aware of. So the challenges of keeping a job, um, something that's come through quite strongly in the literature is that um, autistic people can have very low self-esteem, especially around their abilities in employment. And there's a paper by Casey Maris and it's out, oh, I put an E instead of an A anyway, um, that they make, a lot of ne negative comments about themselves. So if um, an employer hears this, they may well interpret that in a different way than the person means it to be. Um, and people can have poor working memory and auditory processing issues. So obviously this, is, this can be challenging if someone's supposed to follow instructions, um, having motor issues, motor coordination difficulties, so making notes and writing quickly. And then of course the whole social communication difficulties, a lot of um, work involves um, communication between a manager and an employee and there can be difficulties there. And there's this one phrase in the paper, which I absolutely loved, which was a reduced, that people with autism can have a reduced concern for reputation management. So basically they, they care less what people think. Um, and I just, I love the way it was phrased. So if you want to think about if someone is in a meeting and they're um, trying to follow instructions and take notes, like all the, the different challenges that are kind of coming together in that situation to, um, kind of dictate the success of that particular meeting. 
So the types of employment can be a challenge as well. Um, Claire alluded to this uh, about working full time. It's not the case that everybody wants to work full time, but it is a case that part time working is more common for women than it is for men. And then we have these zero hour contracts and temporary contracts, which I think can be quite anxiety inducing and give a feeling of insecurity to people, which um, if you are autistic, you can worry more about these kinds of things. And that can then in turn affect your job performance. Um, and it's always important to consider the sensory environment of the workplace, like is there loud noises, are there strong smells, open plan offices are a bit of a nightmare for that kind of thing, being able to concentrate. And then I came across this case study of a professional autistic relationship, and in that this particular article they, they talk about the problem of double empathy, which is a kind of area of research in autism where it's not just about the person with autism themselves having an impairment in communication and that's where the difficulty lies. There's actually um, an issue with the way the people without autism are interpreting um, the person with autism's behaviours and communication. So it's very much um, a two-sided kind of issue rather than just an issue that lies with the, the person with autism. Um, and you can Google it, it's um, employers may discriminate against autism without realising. And I have a quote from it here. Um, so in it, he describes about um, this man who was having difficulties at work and then the manager was really responsive and, and really thought they were doing everything they could to support this autistic employee. But it had emerged in meetings that the autistic employee would often misunderstand what had been said. And in response, the employer had stressed they had no problem with the meeting being stopped if the autistic employee wanted to ask a question or clarify a point of discussion. But this is a problematic assumption because the autistic employee might have not even realized there was a misunderstanding until much later when it had become a problem. But even if he had recognized in the moment that there was a misunderstanding, it shouldn't be assumed that he would be immediately able to speak up. So I think um, like we're all aware of the communication difficulties that someone with autism can have. Being able to kind of recognize a problem and then articulate that in a socially appropriate way very quickly would be very challenging for a lot of people anyway. And then when I was doing this um, kind of reading around, I thought I'd include, include this quote because I don't know if you've had this experience, but when you read a quote and it's like they've just gone into your brain and actually taken out what you were thinking and put it on paper and it, it's quite uncanny and unnerving. But um, this particular quote is from a book called Knowing Why, Adult Diagnosed Autistic People on Life and Autism. And it's, it's really good, actually. So I recommend that you go and look it up or buy it. And there's a chapter on autism and work by a woman called Kelly Braun. And she's describing how difficult she finds it to be balanced in her work. So she's either completely hyper-focused on her work or she's overwhelmed and then is unable to work. Um, okay, so overcommitting had led to feelings of panic and overwhelm. When she's too much on her plate, her brain goes into overdrive and then executive function issues start to rear that ugly head. She becomes overwhelmed and she doesn't know what to do or even where to start. Then she gets upset with herself and fears letting everyone down. And then this has resulted in bosses telling her that she's an inconsistent performer because she's either over delivering because she's hyper focused and in her stride or she's doing the bare minimum because she's overwhelmed. So just to kind of reflect on those two quotes, that there will always be challenges for autistic people in the workplace, but they can be addressed with work from both sides. It's the responsibility of both people. Um, it may be difficult, but this is probably an ideal that we should be striving for. So just to quickly talk to some potential accommodations, working from home, um, I think it was Elaine said, like we've been told you can't work from home, you can't work from home, suddenly COVID happens and we can work from home. Um, and not COVID working from home, this is not kind of normal working from home. Um, we don't usually have our children at home if they're supposed to be in school, that kind of thing. So um, just to stress that, um, having a workplace mentor to ask a question, answer questions can be really helpful, using AT to help with planning and time management. Um, something I think would be brilliant is this recognition of unwell days. So you know, to take a sick day, you have to get a doctor's note 
but for people with autism they can often have poor interoception or not realize that they're physically ill or the level of illness that they're experiencing or be very find it very difficult to recognize their own levels of stress stress and emotion so being able to have that it's okay to take a day if they just know they need a day and not have to justify it um would be really helpful around kind of managing yourself at work more freedom around timing of breaks uh, flexible start and finish hours if possible and sources of support uh, having a mentor at work if they're familiar with autism that would be great um, getting opportunities to hear positive feedback and encourage a person to reflect on their achievements because research has shown that people very often don't realize that the things that they're doing good at work unless someone actually says it to them there are specialist employment agencies um, but if you are in college, work with your career service. Like we're really lucky in UCC to have a really good career service that looks at um, supporting autistic students. But this is something that students need to do when they're in college, kind of set themselves up. Um, and to end on a positive note, and there seems to be much more general, much more understanding amongst the general public. So that's including employers as well. I think even in the past five to ten years. Um, being autistic in the workplace it's it's definitely a better situation than it was there are better sports and education and training although we have to recognize there's still quite a high dropout rate for autistic people um, in in education and in training and then th there's been an increase in adult advocacy and self-advocacy which is showing what is possible so even this um, webinar I think three of us have a, a diagnosis so you know being able to see successful autistic people at work is um, a really positive thing. Okay, that's me.